To the second episode, Pete. We We're haven't back. been canned. We haven't. Of the Scudbone Show. Yes. Mate, you're looking like you've just crawled out of bed. What's happened? <laughs> I've actually made an effort this day today. What's the, what are you talking about? What's going on, mate? I know, I know beards are massive in the music scene right now. They are, yeah. But you're a little bit behind schedule, my friend. That's true, it's true. Look, I know beards are considered very much the hip thing to do. It's also, for me, more the lazy thing to do. It's just so much easier to maintain because there's no maintenance. <laughs> this is good. You're like, a, you're like an untouched lawn. That's exactly right. You're yeah. like a reverse <laughs> trendsetter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, today coming up on the show, we've got a few good things. You're going to play some weird ass instrument yes. that I've never seen before. What I've is been, it? I've been scouring the net for. Uh, so I like to collect weird and wonderful instruments from around the world, and I found an awesome one. So I'll show you that later on. I like to collect weird and wonderful sex toys from around the world, and uh, <laughs> that's in a whole nother show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not part of that one though. <laughs> no, 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 but I have got a shares in a latex factory in oh, the pool. Look at that. Win win. <laughs> win win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on now. Uh, we've got a female artist coming up today by the name of Terry Marie, who is outstanding. Pete, love it. Love What's it. happened in your week? Well, I mean, I've had a lot of stuff happening with recording. I've had a few guys come in. I've got a few EPs on the go. I can't give away too much because they want to keep it under wraps for now. But there's uh, going to be a couple of those coming up in a couple of shows' time. Um, I've also done a bit more work to renovating this uh, studio. It's going to be coming up soon to be expanded. As you improved. can see behind us, look what we've done with it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's like Taj Mahal, doesn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Watch this, but at one moment it can be the Taj Mahal. Yep. Next minute, we're in <laughs> Russia. We're in Russia. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. It's cool. Oh. Now, before we go any further, I just got to raise uh, an issue. We can go as far as we want. Oh, just okay, one good. second to get to Russia. We've had our first bit of criticism, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's from me. Yep. And it's about me. As you know, I'm a, I'm a radio host. I do my Close to Nowhere radio show. And as a radio host for the past four years, talking fast is my thing. And I've, I've always done it as well, you know. You so are fast. I am a fast talker. So, I watched last week's show and I just thought I couldn't understand myself. So... For poor people watching couldn't understand. So I'm going to make an effort today to enunciate everything. Oh, you, yes, the arsonist had yes. oddly shaped <laughs> feet. I can't guarantee it's going to happen all the time. I might slip back into, like I am now, back into the radio voice, but I'll try my best to slow down. We'll see what happens. <laughs> might be an hour show, not a half hour show. We'll see. Good luck, Pete. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I speed up. We just slow the whole show down. <laughs> we can do that today. That's right, exactly. This modern technology. Yeah, yes, but that's right. Well, let's get straight into it. Uh, Look, first we're going to cross uh, to the Court Hotel. Uh, I was at an open mic yes. session there. Yep. Some very interesting characters, I must say, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one particular guy, his name was uh, Rob, I yep. believe, yep. and uh, very grungy, beautiful voice. And soloist, I think with eh? a, yeah, soloist. Yeah, with yeah. a bit of with a bit of work, I think he'd make a great frontman. Nice. He's a very interesting dude. Cool. Long blonde hair. Looks very much like he just. Rolled out of Seattle. So you had a chat with him? Or well, I had a chat. Oh, we got to have a bit of a chat. The was heavily rolling. inspired yeah. by Dad. <laughs> and another little interesting dude who plays a red didge made out of like roll cello tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, which he made himself because unfortunately he had his he had another one stolen at some point. Ah, uh, right, okay, yep. Uh, we can get him on the show for the weird instrument section. Might be cool. Where are we going? Mate, good call. There you go. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> why don't we go check it out? This is the Court Hotel. This is our open mic segment, first one of the show. Yes. So uh, here we are, Court Hotel. Keep your eye out for Kenichi. Oh, and there was a great guy from Hong Kong. Oh, really? He's singing Hong Kong stuff. <laughs> 
While he's singing Hong Kong stuff, I'm singing in the background. Hong Kong Fui, number one super guy. <laughs> By yourself in a corner with a little brandy. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Crying. Let's, let's have a look and see what he's got. <laughs> All right. Here we are, Cold Hotel. Check it out. <laughs> Nah, I um, I moved here when I was about six, seventeen. I lived in a town called Training, up near up near Meriden. It's about two hours drive from here, give or take. Uh, and yeah, I grew up there. I was listening to music and shit. I didn't, I didn't have any access to like much music or anything. I like went down to the shops, picked up a Lincoln Park album, and that shit set it off for me when I was a young fella. Nah, there was a pub. People went there, they put on the jukebox and they drank. The old school, like, I don't even know the names, but like they had Ha Fly American Pie, that, that sort of shit. And then they had like all the pop songs, they had like the Britney Spears and the Pink and stuff. They had, um, they had some Eminem on there. My dad, nah, fuck. I haven't, as a young and I was nowhere near my dad, but um, as a kid, musically, I had nothing. Like I said, I had no, like, I didn't have any incident until I hit, like, 15 years old. And, it's like, I had rage on the telly, and I'd commit to that, and I'd stay up as late as I possibly could and watch, it all, watch as much as I can. And eventually I got a, a VCR and a recorder and shit, and, like, I set it to record, and... One day I sat there and watched the whole video eventually and I made it to the metal section. That that came on at like two o'clock and that blew my mind. I like I discovered Alice in Chains and stuff and like, oh man, that sort of stuff did it for me. Eventually I got a hold of the internet and I got into band like I, I was a big fan of Lincoln Park and they're put into a new metal genre. And I looked up new metal and I discovered Mudvayne. Mudvayne is a big band for me. Those guys, they're, they're singing, their vocals, like they get, they get really angry, they've got the metal about them, and then they get really trippy and they sing and stuff. And they're bass, I'm a bass player by heart. Those guys set off bass for me. Their bass player, Ryan Martini, he's insane, and he, that, guy, that guy does it for me. I'm born in Australia, but I've also lived in Japan, and yeah, um, when I come back to Australia like 11 years ago, I, my grandfather started to teach me how to play didgeridoo, and that's, that's what I usually do now, I just play didgeridoo, and I like playing. <laughs> he, he took a lot of his time out, um, out of his way to actually come and see me and like teach me to play, and yeah, he taught me how to circle breathe and everything. Um, no actually, it's a uh, homemade, 
Yeah, um, I kind of, I was, like, bored one time, and I kind of got drunk, because, like, my, my original digital jewel got stolen. So I was just thinking to myself, so I, well, my other one got stolen, so why not make one? So I decided, yeah, I had a metal pipe at home and, and a Coke bottle and sticky tape and paper. So, yeah, I just put the paper around the metal pole and around the Coke bottle, put the sticky tape all around it and decided to put wool around the ditch to so make it look red. <laughs> And um, another guy that I used to meet is from also from Japan. His name is Shiro. He was one of the best players. I always listen to him every day. I see him. I was, you know, chuck him some coins when he was out busking and stuff. And you know, I just sit there listen for a couple of hours. Well, what I want to do uh, with with playing didgeridoo uh, is try and try and perform a band and like have have a, like a fast beat dig in the background. Um, yeah, my father, half Aboriginal, so uh, my grandfather is just Aboriginal. Uh, he's um, from up north, uh, he's Yamaji tribe. Um, well, I just only started, like, like, last week, and... As soon as I started last week, I was like, I thought to myself, like, I'm, I'm gonna do it like every Tuesday, because like, I thought it was fun and it's a lot more peaceful. And at, at when, whenever I'm at about busking in the street, <laughs> I, was, I see a lot of stuff going on, and it just doesn't seem right for me. That we should be together. Unbelievable. How I used to say that I'm on the place that you need to know. You just wanna know how I feel. The land is showing it down and I don't feel. No good thing for me to join you. Okay, the Court Hotel Peak. Not go. a bad idea for an open mic night. Very close to the train station area. So, Ideal, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah look, I, I think it's... You can you might see a few of the sort of streeties and that turn up and, and yeah, play yeah. some interesting blends of music. But grunge was obviously back. Yeah. But what I'm interested in is the characters behind this music. These, these guys are fascinating to watch, to, to, to talk to. It's awesome. They're actually like the most... They're, they're probably the most interesting people to interview as yeah. well because... Yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you're playing music for a long time, you've done a few interviews, and you get slick at it. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah. These guys are all Pete. They haven't done it before. No. So, uh, yeah, it's absolutely. Like some pros cool. like us, because we're, we're really slick with this stuff, so <laughs> we're all over it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pete, we're going to move on to the next little part. Yep. Uh, Terry Marie. Tell Terry me Marie. all about her. Fantastic artist. I actually held a gig at Slow the... Slow down, Pete. Oh, yes, good, good. Thank you. Yeah, and it comes. The Irish semester. <laughs> <laughs> I held a gig at the Charles Hotel with a few artists um, on a compilation album I put together. And uh, Terry Marie was there just to watch us. She was a friend of one of the artists. And, and her boyfriend came up to me and said, look, you should check out my girlfriend. And I thought, okay, here we go. Like, yeah, everyone loves the girlfriend's voice and stuff. Like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Let's, let's have a listen. And I was blown away. She's amazing. Amazing. And I'd never heard her stuff before. So I got her into the studio. I recorded one of her songs. And from there, I, th I thought, no, we've got to get the whole album done. So, and, and while she was in the studio, I filmed her performing a few songs. 
Did she know you were filming her? Yes. <laughs> it's a small studio and I'm a big man. so Just, can't just, just <laughs> wanted to remove any weirdness out of that. So what I do, this is one of the songs that is on the album and also she filmed live. So here's Terry Marie live at the Scully Records studio performing Come Again. Yourself the door. Get out my head. You're not welcome there anymore. But you stay. I stay. Watch your love run down my face. And you stay. I stay. But I in my heart ain't got no place for you. Well, mate, Terry Marie. Yeah, beautiful Very voice. impressive. Amazing. And very reminiscent of Regina Spector, but definitely her own style. So, and, and her whole album has a band behind her. It's not just voice. Regina Spector. Yeah, as far as her sound. Have you ever heard her? Oh, mate, you've got to check her out. I have, but uh, yeah. I thought, I think, I always thought she was a little bit more country. Well, a little bit more rock and roll. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Yeah, I mean. Maybe I'm thinking <laughs> Phil Spector. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Are they in a relation? Let's not go there, yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, Phil liked his cocaine, didn't he? <laughs> speaking of cocaine, Pete. <laughs> speaking of cocaine. Yeah. It, it was the drug of choice in the rock and roll industry for years. Of course. Mate. Of course yeah. Yeah. I know, we're a healthy, wholesome show we here are. at Scudbone. Yeah, yeah. But we do like to touch on what is all things rock and roll. And yes. unfortunately, sometimes uh, a little bit of the old uh, sticky icky yes. or the, a bit of the old whitey nighty <laughs> creeps into a few people's performances. and uh, While the cameras are on. <laughs> while the cameras are on. <laughs> Now, I bet my left nut that this bloke is on something. Which one? This bloke. Okay. Girls crazy. 
Genius. I was captivated watching that. Captivated? Captiva and no, that's, that song was pretty nice song. Is all right. Voice, not too bad. Drumming, sold me. That that got me hooked in the whole video. So that, that's what a band wants to do, hook you. And he did it. So I don't know. It's, it's working for him. <laughs> yeah, the cocaine's working for him. <laughs> oh, well, they do say that it's better in Asia. Well, where's the proof for that? <laughs> Mate, I've got the proof. Okay, well, check let's... this out. <laughs> Definitely did it his way. He did, and the way Frank Sinatra never did it. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely true, I'm sure, but yeah. Was... <laughs> well, Pete, that guy is insanely happy. Yes, with a big capital I at the end. With a big capital I, <laughs> I am happy. Well, Pete, to more of a serious note, we yep. need to sort of touch on uh, a few charity events that are happening around. Yes. One in particular. And, and one in particular yeah. is the Expressible event, awesome. which is happening on October 17th. Yep. At Forest Place mm -hmm. in Perth City. Yep. You will see more on the next upcoming shows about that. It's all about uh, raising awareness and raising funds to try and help some of the sort of young kids and, and people that have been forced to live on, on the streets That's of right. Perth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's an event for young people who are living on the streets yeah, and, yeah. and have been forced out of home yep. for whatever reason. And yep. uh, this is to bring awareness to that cause. Absolutely. And there's a great lineup of bands that are going to be there. I think there's one or two to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, one band in particular is a band called September Sun. Yes. And yes. I love these guys. Yes. I was fortunate enough to uh, mix these guys the other week when they played in a Battle of the Bands comp. Brilliant. And uh, I'm flying the flag for a mate. Good, good, I good. I think yep. they're brilliant. They nice. look good. They sound fantastic. Yep. And, uh, well, let's show you guys a little bit of a snippet. This is a little interview that went out for September Sun. And uh, check this out. Let's do it.
um, that's a good question. About two years. Yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah. I mean, we've all known each other musically probably for about, oh god, like eight years or more. Yeah. Right. But yeah, been in and out of bands, but yeah, this one about yeah about two years. Yeah, it's coming about. Yeah. Guys, absolutely love the sound. I really enjoyed it tonight. Got right into it. Um, make your influences. Who, who do you guys love? And are you trying to be? like somebody are you trying to do your own thing or is there someone you're saying yeah you know we wouldn't mind being like those guys they're kicking it yeah, yeah. we're all um we're all got different influences um pete the singer's got quite uh, a few different kind of bands that you know we like but me and grant especially like uh two fighters clean strange type stuff we always play something like that but there's a lot of people are like what about their set choices we want to have our own town, obviously, but we got influences like a lot of people say, like, Birds of Tokyo, that type of stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're the circus vibe, but you know, I suppose you just want to have to carve out your own sound eventually. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we are just going to keep writing and see what happens. Definitely want to, um, definitely want to sort of avoid the stereotypes um, that you, you generally get given. So, I guess, yeah, we're still trying to explore and do, uh, do some different things. Yeah. Um, yeah, the next gig is uh, at 459 uh, Bar, which is the small bar near the Rosemont. Um, that's September 5th, um, and we're supporting um, a band called Last Week's Heroes. Um, yeah, there's a few other um, good local bands on there, like uh, Lion Eyes, which are doing pretty good right now. And, um, it's also one with Amber Down coming up end of this month, and also uh, Flatway, which are great guys from Albany, on the 13th, and we're also looking for one a little while along at the Amplifier in November with um, yeah. Mansour, which is going to be great. Great, great venue, the Amplifier, but yeah. or if you like me and you have no idea what's going on, check SeptemberSun.com before the gig, and that's how you know what's going on, because that's what I do, uh, you know, half down before the gig. Dot com .au, yeah, uh, day, day before the gig, I, I check and see what's going on, because I have no idea, I'm just drumming. <laughs> well, Pete? That mate, great band. That, those guys rock. Oh, I love them. I'm keen to see them live. That'd be awesome. Keen to see them live, and there's you may get your chance soon at, at the Expressible coming great. up. Providing these guys can make the bill, fingers crossed. Right, right. Hopefully they can make it. But uh, keep your ears to the ground yes. for these guys. Now, Pete, I love this new segment yes. of the show we've got. It's exciting, isn't it? It is exciting. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's like a bit of a WTF moment. <laughs> so the idea is Pete's going to bring an instrument every time we have one of these shows, and we're going to look at it and. and Kind of find out what it is and yeah. talk to us about these exotic instruments. Absolutely. What have you got this week? This week, it's, uh, the real name is a Bull Bull Tarang, but it's uh, more unofficially known as an Indian banjo, and it was purely found by accident. I was looking for a banjo online, and this thing, <laughs> and this thing popped. This <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'm slightly hearing impaired. <laughs> Pete's slightly visually impaired. Why aren't I looking for it on the internet, <laughs> and then you telling me how it sounds? Uh, there you go. That so the actual sense. fact is you were looking for a banjo. I was looking for and one. Went, There's one. Click. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, this weird thing comes to me. So uh, uh, what, a bu- what's that? A bong bong talang. A bull bull talang. A bull bull, bull, bull talang. Here we go. Here he is. The Give the right folks here. at home a look at that. Okay. What you have here. It right. looks like a key. It looks a bit like a key tar. You are actually very, very right. It's the true key tar because it is a guitar with the strings and you play them with keys. So it's not like a piano that's uh, glorified, looking like a guitar that's uh, called a guitar. This is a guitar. So um, yeah, I've got this thing. I got it from Delhi, from India. I couldn't find any in Australia. Like a, uh, uh, sorry, there, a bit yeah. of uh, microphone slappage. But uh, <laughs> this is a little bit like a. This isn't a dentel show. Um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this isn't home home shopping. <laughs> uh, but I'll hold it up for you, Pete, so you can talk about Brilliant, it. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. The so idea behind it is it's just a it's a double strings, two strings. Yep. Uh, and it's tuned to a G, and all the keys are like the piano keys. You've got black keys and white keys. They relate to piano, so you're literally playing a keyboard, but you're plucking the string, but you're plucking the string to give it the sound. Oh, I sort of get it. It's a little yeah. bit like you're just sort of you're shortening the length of the yeah. string, obviously, to the bridge. It's pretty much a mandolin It's pretty style. much all yeah. sort of like what you do with a slide guitar when you're sliding the steel up the, yep. up the neck of a guitar. Yep. Uh, it looks like we've got a little pickup down there, Pete. Yeah, yeah. So it is a semi-acoustic... And it can be amplified? You can, yes. yes. It's passive by the looks of things, it or is. does it take that risk? No, no, it's a passive. Yeah. It is passive? Yep. Mate, have you have you played it with sort of effects and gone crazy? I have, yeah. And what's useful with this thing is an octave pedal. An octave pedal. And the octave pedal gives it a, an octave down, or even two octaves down. So you get a really nice full sound out of what's normally a very high-end instrument. So it's pretty cool. And I've done weird things like with Wah Wah and 
and, and delay and stuff, reverb sounds nice, but I haven't gone too far yet. I've only recently got it, so I've actually wrote, wrote a little song on it. I've written a song that's going to be shown right now, I think, actually, just to give you an idea of how it sounds. All right. And, um, and then you can see, just judge for yourself, hot or not. All right, so <laughs> hot or not. <laughs> so Pete... Uh, not me, the instrument. So Pete's about to give you a bit of a sample that he's recorded earlier. Yes. He's one we prepared earlier, Rob. <laughs> that's right, exactly. uh, On his hoo jangle wanga danga jangle jangle. <laughs> So uh, that's pretty much all it from Pete and I. Uh, as far as the great line goes, we hear the regular hunters are doing a little bit as far as work-wise going. The Whipper Snapper Distillery ah, is yes. having its grand opening on the 13th of September. Yes. So uh, that's at Kensington Street. Brilliant. Uh, I do believe the band The Rumble's playing there. Nice, nice. Uh, I do believe a guy called Matt Hort from the band The Rumble's playing there. Yep, yep. I do believe the regular hunters are playing there. Nice. With Liam Ish and nice. the Matt Cal Trio. Oh, brilliant. So, a big night of entertainment. I may even get up and play a few tunes. God help us. If they let me. <laughs> <laughs> and I might join you. Why not? I might. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Just remember, Pete, if you want videos made of your band, a video clip we do them from as little as $450. Pete Brilliant. does recording for as little as 80 bucks. Come and talk to us at Bluebone Entertainment Solutions or Scudley Records yep. and let us help you out. Definitely. I love this whole we can plug ourselves on our own program. It please. is, and there's no... Complete and utter wankers. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> no, it's all fun. It's all about getting the independent artists out there, the grassroots artists, the opportunity to get some promotion behind them. So that's what we're here for. Love yep. it. Yeah, that's it, mate. So enjoy that, and we'll catch you next time. Over and out.